Mother Nature, Nature seems to have its own way of celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Look how cool this is. This is video of the Aurora Borealis, better known as the Northern Lights, spotted. That was in Finland, Amy. Absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Some of you in the northern U.S. might be able to see these green ribbons of light very late at night as solar storms approach. So this is like ideal. Right? It's so cool. You can see a lot of these, especially on a clear night. It's really, really Space awesome. weather physicist and Dr. Tamitha Skov, she's joining us right now via the phone. This is pretty exciting. Craig and I both have it on our list to actually sure. go and see, uh, say, for Greenland or somewhere closer. But... You're saying folks here in the U.S. could potentially see this. Absolutely. Uh, folks in the U.S. could easily see this tonight. As a matter of fact, the solar storm has hit. It actually hit a little bit on the early side, and it is giving us aurora right now in places like New Zealand. Apparently, the, the uh, shows are just dazzling. That's fantastic. Some of these solar storms, sometimes you hear about them, may be causing a problem for telecommunications. Uh, do you think this would have an impact on the power grids or communication networks? We hear about this sometimes. Right. Actually, this solar storm is on the cusp of causing a little bit of trouble for the power grids, but they are very well equipped. This storm is, planned, is expected to be a G2-level solar storm, and that's right about when the power grids begin to put in mitigating procedures, basically just letting their grids know that you know, there's going to be a little bit of disruption here and there, and don't let all those alarms scare you. So it's not a problem. There are lots of procedures in place, and they should ride these storms out just fine. Would you explain that scale um, for the solar storms? Yes, absolutely. There is a – basically, the Space Weather Prediction Center at NOAA, who's the official uh, solar storm prediction center, they – uh, have scales that basically go from one to five. And, and these scales for solar storms, we call them a G1 to a G5. A G1 level is a minor storm, and that is, believe it or not, something that the power grids don't really care much about, but Starlink sure cared about it uh, last month when all those satellites fell out of the sky. That was a G1 level solar storm. Wow. So even the little minor storms that are like rainstorms can affect us. Wow, but that's... the scales go. Yeah, the scales go up to five, and that can get you as high as, like, uh, the equivalent of a hurricane. And those ones are the ones that affect the power grids. They're much scarier. Fascinating. Very fascinating. Yeah, what about forecasting some of these solar storms? We've come a long way. Can you explain some of the latest technologies to understand, help us understand uh, when they're coming and how they're forecasted? Well, the biggest thing, it, it, all caught, it all starts with solar observations. And the biggest problem we have is that when we see these solar storm, storms come off of the sun, they can launch, but very quickly they become invisible to our imagers. So we kind of have to resort to uh, prediction models, and that's what we've run with at NOAA and at NASA, uh, and that gave us the prediction that the storm was actually going to hit sometime today. The neat thing in this particular case is that we actually had the solar orbiter spacecraft right in the path of the solar storm way ahead of Earth, about halfway between the sun and Earth, and it got a sneak peek of what the interior of that solar storm was going to look like. And sure enough, it gave us an alert that the solar storm was going to be faster and hit us sooner, and the aurora was going to start right away, and it was bang on. Okay, so game on, and, and this is exciting. I can hear the excitement for you. I'm getting excited. <laughs> Which states in the northern U.S. can see the northern lights tonight? What is the best time to see them? Well, I would think because the solar storm has actually got uh, aurora is expected early with this particular storm. So when, as soon as it gets dark, I would start going outside and looking to the northeast. Uh, aurora is very similar to the sun and the moon. They ri it rises in the east and it sets in the west. And since this, the uh, aurora is only going to be happening with the first half of this solar storm because of the way it's configured, people who are in, pl in dark skies and places like Maybe as far south as places like New York, places like uh, Iowa, maybe even Colorado, and uh, maybe even the northern tier of California might get a chance to see Aurora. But you're going to need to be in dark skies, and even if you can't see it with your own eyes, take a camera. Cameras are better at seeing it and take long exposures, and you might be surprised what you see on your camera LED. That is so cool. I know a lot of people, maybe even in Washington, sometimes they've got the time lapses going as well. We appreciate your time and your information. This is fascinating and fantastic, and we look forward to seeing those. If, if you catch some glimpses of those, we'd love to 
see them here on Fox Weather as well, right, Amy? Yeah, absolutely. Oh it really does seem like something that you could do if you time everything right, mm -hmm. as long as you have the cooperation of the sky. Right. It really does make a difference if you've got clear skies to look through. If it's cloudy or you're having to kind of maneuver through the clouds, it gets a little tricky. So let's give you the forecast, and that will help you prepare tonight. Like she said, if you're in New York and you get to a place where it's a little bit darker, this is an opportunity for you along the East Coast, especially down... Um, even to the mid-Atlantic, you can't get too far into the southern latitudes, but if you maybe got there right into the mid-Atlantic, and, and it looks like there's a couple of pockets, especially for parts of western Pennsylvania and eastern Iowa, or I, eastern Ohio. So these are some spots, I think, where you get really good clear conditions. Otherwise, uh, Mother Nature spoils the view. So it's a little strategic here, uh, Craig. you got to have the combination of the forecast, which she's given us, but also the skies and uh, the right latitude. So oh. put all those together, you could have a spectacular show tonight. Yeah. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.